Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Have you ever wondered what games you should sell or you should use? Find out here at Purdue's. Find out on our top 10 list what games you cannot miss. Don't forget to subscribe to Purdue's. Welcome to Purge Reviews, where we're counting down the top 100 board games on the Board Game Geek. I'm really happy that you decided to join us today. We're getting down to the nitty gritty right here. We're going to be looking at 20 to 11, so we're almost at the top games. I'm going to give you a little bit of my thoughts, whether I liked it, how I played it out, who I think it might be recommended for, or whether I kept or I purged it. And let's jump right in. Number 20 is Through the Ages. This game used to be a lot higher. This is the Civilization game. Which is odd because it doesn't have a map or any of armies on the map. It abstracts the attacking and military out. But this is the go-to civilization game for sure. I really like this game quite a bit. It's got all it has interesting characters you can add to it and leaders, depending on which version you have of the game, will be what set of leaders that you have. They work remotely the same. The newest version tweaked a lot of stuff, and I would go with the newest version if it was me. I do like it quite a bit. But this game is heavy, guys. Heavy, heavy, heavy. There's a lot going on. It's a little bit to teach. I think if I was going to play this game, especially with new people, I'd make sure I knew, had some, at least one person who really knew the game that can walk you through the turns and just jump right in, go through a couple turns, and kind of learn it. I don't think you'll kill yourself too much in the first age. If you thought you did, then just restart. Play maybe the A age. But there is a version that allows you to only play one, two, or three ages and kind of simplify it out from there. It's a fantastic game. It's kind of sad to see it drop this slow, but Through the Ages is definitely a winner. Number 19 is Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition. I am shocked that this game is that high. With that said, I really like this game. I like it. It's a little heavy on story and a lot of randomness now. So if you want, it has Apple integration. So a lot of what you'll be doing is through the app, which randomizes it. If you have the first edition, you can add that stuff in. Expansions will add that in. But it's really story driven. It's really story heavy. I don't feel like I'm making a ton of decisions. I'm making a lot of rolls of dice. And I'm making decisions on rolling those dice. But I don't know if I'm controlling it, the app is controlling it, or the dice are controlling it. It's not a knock on the game. It just is. And it works in this aspect. I'm surprised it's considered the 19th best game of all time. But with that said, I really like this game. And I always have a really good time. The game is really dependent on the app, and the app needs to keep coming out with more scenarios to play to keep the game fresh. As long as they do that, I could see this game holding its place. So that's Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition. Number 18 is Arkham Horror the Card Game. I have zero interest in this. I'm not going to do any more LCGs. I'm done. I heard it's built off the Lord of the Rings, the card game version. I have some of that. I'm happy with that. I don't particularly need this version. Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition and Eldritch Horror are fine for me. So... It, as amazing as people say this game is, as high as it is, I'm probably never going to play it. Number 17 is Blood Rage. Blood Rage is a game Eric Lang has been making for years. He made Midgard, and then he made the Conquest of Old Time Earth with Warhammer stuff. And he's made this game over and over and over again. I think he even made it again called Rising Sun. I'm probably going to get some heat for that, but that's my understanding. And now we have Blood Rage. And Blood Rage is a really fun game. I feel like that's kind of where he should lead the system at, that it really works there. Now let's move on to something new. The miniatures are fantastic. The look of the game is fun. The card drafting is good. The game is very easy to pick up and understand. You read the cards, you do what they say. There's some battles that are going on it. Blood Rage is one that if you've been holding off on, this is what I think you need to go back and take a look at. It's very good. Number 16 is Mage Knight, the board game, or what I like to call Downtime Analysis. This is a game that will take you forever to play. It's probably best experience as a solo game. Now, I may get some heat for that, but that's just my... I, I would never play this game with three people or more. I mean, you could probably talk me into three people. But my gosh, it takes forever. The downtime is horrific. Maybe three if you, everybody knew how to play. And they were willing to move the game along. Man, one or two is about all I want. I'm about pretty close to parching this game just because it's so rules intensive and it's so big and takes so long to play that I'd just rather do something else. And there are a lot of other games on the market for me. But this game has a huge, huge following. People love this game. I don't see it as much, but they do. So know that I'm in the minority. Number 15 is Agricola. This is one of my favorite games of all time. My wife and I love this game. This game will forever be in my collection. There's plenty of expansions. There's card decks you can get. This game has variety out the wazoo. 
and it's a very, very good game to start out with. A lot of people say Caverna replaces it, perhaps, but Agricola is a little bit simpler. It has card play. It's a really fun game, and one I think you shouldn't overlook for Caverna, and I think they're still pushing this game a lot. Number 14 is Puerto Rico. This game used to be number one, and it is a game of I take an action, and I get a really good action, and you get a lesser action. This has been used a lot, say, in Race for the Galaxy, Twilight Imperium 3, and I guess 4, and so on. It's been overused a lot, and this game is really fun. There are some complaints about the game in the fact that if you're with somebody who doesn't know what they're doing, they can kind of wreck the whole thing, and the game may have become scripted for some people. That's not the case for me. I really still like Puerto Rico. It's a game I'll probably keep in my collection for a long time. Number 13 is Caverna, the Cave Farmers. This is the game that a lot of people say replace Agricola. It adds these dwarves where you can do things. You're not going to get as many negative points as you're going to in Agricola. And you have a lot of options. The ruby gives you a wild card, a lot of different ways to feed. You have the dwarves that will be going into, into the caves and doing things. It's a really good game. I think it has a little bit more complexity than Agricola to me because in Agricola, you have these cards. You may only have five or six cards. That's all you're going to have for the turn. But this one has a little bit more complexity. You have a lot of buildings that are out and you need to look through. So just know that I would start with Agricola and move up to Converna if that's where you're going to go. But I know that Caverna doesn't have the stress of feeding as much because it's much easier to feed. Number 12 is War of the Rings 2nd Edition. I really do like War of the Rings. It's one of my go-to two-player games, especially with some time to play. The 2nd Edition is probably the way to go if you're not going to get the Collector's Edition. And it streamlines some rules and added some things in that are really fun. This is War of the Rings in a box. This is the game that you want. If you like War of the Rings, this is the one you want. It's only two-player. As a really neat mechanic where you're rolling dice, and those dice are going to give you actions. As the bad guy, you will always have more dice to roll, thus more actions. But you need to take some of those dice and look for the ring. Look for the fellowship that's going with the ring, which will limit your actions. So always that push and pull of, do I want, how many actions do I want to use this turn versus how many do I want to look to look for the fellowship? It's a really fun game. Yeah, it's kind of a war game kind of thing. The fellowship is definitely harder to play. If you're new, I think you should play the Sauron character. I think it's a little bit easier to jump into. If you know what you're doing with the Fellowship, you can give the more advanced player that, but you can definitely play both sides. Really fun game, and one I highly, highly, highly recommend. Number 11 is Castles of Burgundy. This is one of those games that I'm just surprised it's this high on the list. It's a really good game. Don't get me wrong. I really like it. It's about dice placement, and you'll be rolling some dice and placing them out. I think it's a really good game. It's probably Stefan Feld's most famous game, and he's a very, very famous designer. I'm just kind of surprised. It lacks theme. It's kind of boring looking. It's very bland. But it has gameplay. Gameplay, gameplay, gameplay. And this game has it in spades. I don't know if Castles of Burgundy is a game that I was sort of, you know, recommending to people. But it's number 11 all time on BGG, so we cannot ignore it at all. Thank you for watching the Top 100 Games on Board Game Geek and my analysis of those. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. Subscribe to the channel really gives me the feedback that I need. Or may leave a comment about some of these games that you've played. I'd really like to interact with you and hear your comments on these games. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate you tuning in. If you liked it, please like it and hit that little subscribe button. That really helps out the channel. Let's us know that you're getting the videos that you want. If you agreed or disagree with what I said, feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say, and I promise that I will comment back. Thanks for watching, and everybody else, keep playing games.